morning, BBC Houston. It's good to see you all here in the house. If you're tuning in live, we welcome you this morning. Would you rise to your feet as we open up in a word of prayer? God, we're so grateful this morning, Lord, as we're gathered here, Father, as a church family, Lord, just to give you praise this morning, Lord. Regardless of our week, God, we know, Lord, that we put you first, Lord, and as we put you first, Lord, that your presence would invade this place and that you would change things in our life, God, for the better. Father, for we are your sons and daughters, Lord, and you desire us, God, to have a life and life in its fullest. We bless you this morning, Lord. We ask, God, that your presence, that your spirit would fall down upon this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain staying this morning as we give and pray. Sing with us as the Spirit was moving. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit Come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room. I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come and rest on us. Come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on it. Come and rest on us. Come and rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Come down, Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me. Holy Spirit. Holy Holy Spirit, come rest 
that we can have the confidence in knowing that you won't ever fail us, God. And even when we don't see it, Lord, we know that you're working. We thank you this morning, Lord, that as we call on your name, Lord, that you would change our circumstances, you would change the atmosphere in our life for your glory, God. The atmosphere is changing now for the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds
God this morning through our giving and our offering. And so if you are here this morning, we just praise God that you are here to worship with us. And thank you for those who are watching online as we continue to proclaim the name of the Lord, for he is the one that we worship. And so we continue to praise everyone and thank everyone here for just being able to uh, gather together and worship God with us. He gets all of the praise, all the glory. And so if you would like to give this morning, you can continue to do so by either going to bbchouston.com Right there in the upper right-hand corner is a link that's highlighted in red. You can give through PayPal that way. Secondly, if you want to give through Zelle, you can continue to do so, do so by sending your Zelle to give at bbchouston.com. And lastly, if you want to give on uh, through here by putting your offering in the envelope located in the seat in front of you, you can do so. Once you put your tithing offering in the envelope, just hold on to it, and we can we can drop it off in the blue buckets behind you after service. So praise God that we are here. I don't know about you, but the presence of God is so strong in this place. Praise God for who he is. He gets all the glory. Amen. And so let us bow our heads at this time as we give this time to the Lord. God, we just are here in your presence right now. We thank you, God, that you are there for us in every situation in life, God. And we just continue to proclaim that you are Adonai, God, that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our uh, Shalom. We thank you, God, that you are our Jehovah Rapha, God, our healer. And God, we praise you, God, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us, for you are our righteousness. We are forgiven through your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we bring to you our best in our tithes and our offering. We just ask, God, that you will multiply it, that you will use it to further your kingdom, God. May everything that we, that's being collected right now, may it move your kingdom forward, especially in today's world. May we continue to fulfill and just walk out and step into what you have called for us and proclaim the great commission to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and just commanding everyone to follow everything that you have 
commanded us to, uh, to do, to obey in your word, God. We ask, God, that you will just continue, Lord, to help us to share the vision that you have called us to proclaim to others, for them to love God, love people, and discover purpose, and change the world. We thank you, Lord. We pray for every person here and for everyone watching online that you continue, God, to be with them in this week, God. Let them know, God, that you are there in every situation in their lives. No matter what they're praying for, you are there. You hear them, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We have a few announcements to go over. If you are here with small children from the ages of nursery age to the sixth grade, at this time, our children's ministry is taking place on the other side in the COC. So you can walk your child over there right now where they will join the other kids to worship God this morning. Vacation Bible School VBS 2023 is happening really soon, in a couple weeks actually, from Monday to Friday on June the 12th to the 16th from 7 to 9 p.m. Kids every day that week will come here uh, to participate in VBS, and this is a life-changing moment for a lot of kids as they not only get to discover and hear about the gospel, but also bring their friends. And so the theme this year is Twists and Turns. Uh, and the theme is also about how Jesus uh, changes the game. And so every day that week, kids will learn that Jesus guides them through all the twists and turns in life. And even in those situations where they stumble and it gets hard to never give up because it's never game over with uh, Jesus in your life. Amen. And so this is a free event, but we encourage everyone to register and you can register in the foyer after service. And if you want to participate in the uh, nightly meals. That'll be a $10 fee every night. And so if you want to eat dinner, please know that you just have to uh, pay for that. And we encourage everyone to uh, to bring your child, your kids, and also the, their friends and neighbors as well, because it'll be a great time for the kids to gather together and worship Jesus together. Amen. And last announcement is that uh, as we progress into the second half of the year, we are looking for more Dream Team members to help out in the kitchen uh, with the first month uh, week monthly fellowship meal that takes place every Sunday, not every Sunday, but the first Sunday of every month. And so we are looking for help uh, for the head chefs and also the kitchen helpers. So if you are interested in that, if that's a passion of yours and you would like to serve the Lord in that way, we just ask that you will sign up in the foyer after service this morning. And so with that, let us dive into the message and the word this morning as we invite Pastor Sam as he will come up to share this morning. Amen. Good morning, church. If you can, stand to your feet. I want you guys just go ahead and just say hello to somebody next to you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm very excited today to be able to share the word with you, and I just want to go ahead and just jump in and get started. You know, we'll be closing out the Elijah series today, and I get the privilege of being able to speak also on Pentecost Sunday. And for many of you guys that know about Pentecost Sunday, you know that this is the time, this is when the disciples went up to the upper room and then that the, the, they were filled by the Holy Spirit. This morning, if you're not excited and if you don't feel what's going on in the room, then I don't know where you've been and I don't know what you're doing. Because personally, the moment when we were declaring the names of God, I almost fell out over there just worshiping. One, I didn't even know that the praise team was playing that song today. And two, wow, that was amazing. Being able to just cry out and being able to just call out the names of our Heavenly Father, it just brought so much power in the room. And it's something that I don't want us to lose today is to remember how powerful His name is. To be able to close out the Elijah series today, man, it's really something that's been firing me up inside because this series has changed my life. This series has made me question one, myself, and question two, the amount of faith that I personally have in our Lord and Savior. When we look at the life of Elisha, we see so many things that we can do just like he can too. When we look at the life of Elisha, we've seen so many different things in the last, I think it's now going on six weeks. The first week, what we've learned from Elisha, we see that he, has just a, a, he just has such confidence in the Lord to be able to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to leave my life behind and follow after what God is calling me to do. 
I don't know about you guys, but that faith right there and that amount of faith to have right there, that's a lot. And even on that first week, it made me question, well, would I be able to do that? Something that stuck out to a lot of us when Elisha did that was the fact that he gave away all of his ox. He, he, he cooked them up to have a feast and have a meal because he wasn't returning home. He knew that. There was no backup plan for him. He knew it was all or nothing. And he knew he was going to go and do things for the Lord. I hope that that was something that pushed you forward in your life to say, all or nothing, Lord, this is all for you. The second week, we saw that Elisha's put in a place where the kings are, 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 are trying to win in this battle. And all of a sudden, they said, wait a second, where's the prophet? Where, where's the person that we're supposed to be hearing God's uh, uh, instructions from? And they come up to Elisha, and I'm guessing Elisha's probably de definitely young in his youth, but to stand before the kings, he responded to them almost with such confidence as, why are you trying to go to God now? Why don't you go back to your pagan gods? And that hit so much for me to the point where I was like, the amount of confidence that he has and knows who God is in his life, to be able to tell other people and correct them in their place, I was like, wow, how do you do that? And then we get to the place right after, Elijah says, Bring me a heart player. And instantly right after we hear or, or, or we read that the presence of the Lord comes upon Elisha. Elisha hears the direction of how the battle is supposed to go. And we learn from Pastor Khan about the digging of the trenches. And, and, and inside of your life, personally, are you digging these deep wells? Or are you digging these deep trenches for the Lord to fill? The next week after that, we learn about the axe head. And, and when I think about the axe head story, it's so funny to me because many of us, and I've said this in Sunday school and I've said this in simple churches, many of us are just walking around Christians with just the handle. We've lost our effectiveness and we've lost the ability to use the gifts and talents that God has given us with the sharpness of the abilities that he wants us to have because maybe we've lost the axe head. Maybe we've lost our purpose. Maybe we've lost our, our, our edge. And we see inside that story of Elisha when, 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 when one of his students says, you know, it was a borrowed axe. And, and Elisha's response is, where is it? We see the miracle that happens is Elisha takes a piece of wood, throws it in that direction. And then all of a sudden a metal steel head from the axe just rises up in the water. And it's crazy to see that. And it's one of those things where it's just like, huh, that was strange. I can't believe that that happened. But it's the miracle that happens, and at the very end, Elisha says something to the student that I said in my simple church that really stuck out to me was, Elisha didn't go back in the water to get it. Elisha said, go get it. If God is making uh, uh, it known to you that, yes, you understand, I've lost my sharpness, I've lost my edge, Lord, and how do I get it back? And the Lord says, I can reveal it to you right now, but are you willing to go and grab it yourself? Are you willing to go back and take what's yours? Are you willing to go back and take and claim back what is yours? For many of us in the room, I know that we're in a place right now where we have noticed and recognized, maybe even realized in our life, we're missing our edge, we're missing our sharpness, we're missing our, our, our just our umph when it comes to being a follower of Christ. And to be able to get that back, it's so important because something that I've seen personally, and, and I watch these videos, and I don't know why I watch them on YouTube, but it's always these, like, restoration videos that I love watching. It's like a really old axe, and, and, and it's all rusted up, and somebody's able to make it look sharp and clean, and they sharpen it, and they redo the handle, and they redo, like, putting leather or whatever it is that they do. They, they drill that hole, and they put a strap on or whatever it is that they do, and you're like, wow. And I think that... This whole entire series has been that for us, where maybe you're a little rusted, maybe you're a little, your edge is a little broken or chipped, or maybe the piece of wood has been cracked, or whatever it is, and throughout this whole entire series, God's just been restoring us. And I personally have seen just restoration in a lot of our lives and the things that God has been doing as far as us being able to understand this series, and I've heard so much from the different simple churches that, that's been going on at the Young Professional Simple Church. I heard so many stories so far, and, and I also heard that, that y'all had a really great one last week, and at ours, personally at mine, I've been experiencing so much of what God wants me personally to experience during this season right now, and it's hit so much because when we, when we continue on the series with Elisha, we hear about also the story, and we learn, we learn the story on Mother's Day about this mom who, she had such a heart to take care of Elisha and Elisha's servant that she built a house or prepared a, or, or not a house, but prepared a room upstairs for Elisha to stay in. 
And when I see her heart and when I see her life, it's funny because a lot of the students at Simple Church, they actually said that they related to the mom. And in that story, Elisha is like, man, thank you so much for your, for your servant's heart. Thank you so much. What can we do for you? And she's, can I, can I speak to the king for you? And she's like, no, I'm actually, I'm actually good. You know, my family takes care of me really well. And, and, and the servant says, well, you know, she needs a child. She wants a child. Her husband is old and, and she wants a child. And, and the words that come out of her mouth when Elisha starts to speak and says that she's going to have a child, she's like, no, 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 please, please. It's almost like, don't fool me. I, I know where I'm at right now in my walk, and I know I'm not going to have a child. And Elisha's faith, he just speaks out and prophesies and just says, it. hey, this time this year, you're going to have a child. Story fast forwards, she has a child. And the child goes and out in the field and works with the dad and all of a sudden says, my head hurts, my head hurts. Child gets taken back inside, child dies. You're like, wait a second, what a story. That's, that's a weird way to put it. If that was the end of the story, but it wasn't. It was just the beginning of us being able to see the miracle journey for this mom and also a deep understanding for Elisha. We see something happen. The mom tells the dad, I'm going to go and find the man of God. She says, go and, go and, go and get me a donkey and our servant. And, and she tells the servant, don't you stop until we get to Elisha. She goes and she sees Elisha from far away, and Elisha's servant sees and says to Elisha, hey, that's the woman that we prayed for with the child. And Elisha says, I, well, I hope everything's good, and, and they check, and she actually says, yeah, everything's fine. But the moment that she gets past the servant and gets to Elisha's feet, she kneels at his feet and cries and, and talks to him and says, didn't I tell you, please? Like, I'm paraphrasing, didn't I tell you? Like, don't joke with me that I was going to have a kid. And Elisha's trying to figure out what's going on and finds out that the son has passed. And in this story, this is the part that's really expanded my life to see Elisha's first response is to tell his servant, hey, just go put my staff on that boy's body. Everything's going to be fine. Just, just, just go. First time it happens, actually nothing happens. Gets word back to Elisha, hey, hey, he's, he's, he's not coming back to life. Something, something's messed up. Something's wrong. Elisha then goes to, to, to see the boy himself. And it says in Scripture, and something that I love, and something that we've seen in our simple church, and we've made a note of it every time, Elisha goes up to the room where the boy is laying, and he closes the door behind him. And it says that in Scripture a lot, that Elisha goes to a place, closes the door behind him, and spends time with God. He speaks to God. The moment that he played the harp, the moment that he played worship, he heard God's voice. The moment he walks into the room, closes the door, behind him, he hears the voice of God, or he speaks to God, and he understands just the instructions of what to do to be able to bring this boy back to life. The first time he tries after the staff, something starts to happen. He doesn't give up. It says he, he, he walked in the room, and he was talking to God again, then he does it a second time, the boy comes back to life. What we learn personally in our simple church right there is, are you going to stop at the first time of failure when it comes to things of God? Or will you continue to go on to the point where you see the miracle that happens? Many of us as believers and many of us as Christians, maybe you lost your edge because of that, is that the first sign of disappointment you stopped instead of praying through. You know, it was crazy because on that day in our simple church, it, we, we spoke about that message and it hit us so hard that we said that we're going to end the simple church like this. We're going to go into the room and we're going to close the door and we're not going to leave simple church until we get our answer from God. And so the guys split up. It was me, Tim, and Dylan. We went into the, to Easton's nursery, and we closed the door, and we were praying, and the girls were in the living room, and they were praying. And I'm telling you, the boys, we felt the presence of the Lord in the nursery to the point where all three of us were just crying our eyes out. We were, we were prophesying. We were hearing the, the voice of God. We were hearing the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And things that we were prophesying and things that we were speaking were coming true. It's so crazy how things lined up because it was like, when the Holy Spirit was speaking, let me, let me tell you something. The restoration process for me to get my edge back, to really get polished, it was tough. And on that day, I was finished that day. And it, and it was like the, one of the hardest words for me to hear, and I'll share that later on in the story, or later on in the message. And then the next message that we learned about was just the miracle of the oil. How many of you are sitting in this room saying to yourself, I have nothing to give to God? Literally nothing. I have nothing to give. But if God was to point out one thing in your life and says, just give me that and I'll multiply it. Oh, but I don't have anything. Like, I don't have a gift to serve at church and I don't have this and I don't have that. And what am I going to do? And, and, and I can't be like so-and-so because they're able to play an instrument. I'm not able to do anything. And, and what am I supposed to do? But all that comes from your mouth of doubt when we have to understand that we serve a God who can multiply. We serve a God who can do miracles. We're learning about Elisha's life, but actually we're learning about and seeing a picture of what it looks like to just say yes to God. That's the picture that we get to see. 
We get to see a, a person who's, who goes from being a student to then all of a sudden to leading out almost like a school of prophets and to the point where we see miracle after miracle, and we've only heard a few, but it should question you. It should put you in a place where you're saying, how can I be like that? And if I'm not like that, why am I not like that? Today, I, I, this week, I was talking to Pastor Connor. I was like, hey, I, uh, the real version is, hey, Dad, so how's the message supposed to go this week because Pentecost Sunday? He goes, I know, it's, it's perfect. Talk about Pentecost Sunday and talk about Elisha's life and the, the, the things that he was able to do and talk about Pentecost Sunday and now how we have the Holy Spirit. Boom, put it together. I was like, yeah, just put it together, like that easy, right? But then when I sat down and I looked at everything that we've learned, I keep questioning and asking myself, how am I going to be more like Elisha? And instead of asking myself, how am I going to be more like Elisha? I should say to myself, oh my goodness, I've been missing the whole thing. When you think about it like this and you see that it's in the Old Testament, they didn't have Jesus yet. They didn't have Jesus where they actually were able to get the gift of the Holy Spirit after. We every single day get to live a life where we get to talk to the Holy Spirit, where we have guidance from the Holy Spirit, where we have the leading of the Holy Spirit, and that's how we get to live life now. Today we get to talk about just the portion of where Elijah gets taken up, and gets taken up into heaven. Elisha has a conversation with him just right before he gets taken up to heaven. If you guys can, turn with me and let's read the scripture, and it, it's from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 18, and it's a good amount, so I'm going to read through it. It says, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgad, and Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Elisha responds, Of course I know. Elisha answered, But be quiet about it. Then, Eli then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, but the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Jericho. Then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elijah and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Elisha's response, Of course I know, Elijah answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But again, Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. They, then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided and the two of, of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double share. Some other versions would say a double portion of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will, you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn, drawn by hor horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them. Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and, the, and charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. Elijah picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen from which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River, and catch this right here. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided, and Elisha went across. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance what had happened, they exclaimed, Elijah's spirit rests upon Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Sir, they said, just as the word, word and 50 of our strongest men will search the wilderness for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has left him on some mountain or in some valley. No, Elisha said, don't send them. But they kept urging him until they shamed him into agreeing. And he finally said, all right, send them. So 50 men searched for three days but did not find Elijah. Elisha was still at Jericho when they returned. Didn't I tell you not to go, he asked. This portion of this scripture that we get to read is the transferring of, of what Elijah had and, and Elisha getting double portions of it. You know, I spoke, you know, a couple of weeks ago and I said something just a little bit about this part. And actually, I was waiting for this message to come about. 
Because this message is so important to be able to see the things that Elijah has done in the Bible and and to see that Elisha is witnessing these things and says to Elijah, he could have asked for anything. He could have asked for anything, but yet he asked for double portions of what Elijah has. How wild is that? Elijah's doing miracles, and and, and he can ask God for things, yet Elisha says, I want double portions of what you have. He could ask for money. He could ask for a different position in life. He could ask for whatever it is that he wanted, probably. But he asked for something, and Elijah even says, you asked for something that, that is difficult. And when Elijah says that, I think to myself in that position, I wonder why Elijah says to Elisha that that's difficult. And I wonder if it's because of this. Because at the, after that, it says, Elijah says, okay, you'll get the double portions if you see me getting taken up. And I almost feel like Elijah saying to Elisha, hey, if you can see this spiritually with your eyes and you can understand what's actually happening with my life, that the Lord is taking me up, but this is the way that he's going to take me up. And, and almost like I got VIP service that's going to take me. And if you could see this, then, then you're in pretty much. And that moment in that exchange, Elisha says, I see it. And he's freaking out because this is like before his own eyes now. See, he was probably before living life seeing things out of Elijah's life, and now he sees it out of his own eyes. And I think that's something that's important because that kickstarts everything for Elisha. And I'm asking you the question is this, is are you living your spiritual life through the eyes of somebody else? Or are you living your spiritual life through the eyes of the spiritual eyes that God has given you? See, if you're living life through the spiritual eyes of somebody else, you're only living off of their testimonies. But do you have testimonies yourself? See, the thing about it is this, is an axe or a knife or anything like that. For me, I I enjoy cooking and I really enjoy having a sharp knife. And the reason why is because I'll think to myself, man, that knife cut really well last time. And if I'm cutting a piece of steak this time and the knife doesn't cut well, I go and sharpen it myself. See, but you don't just go into anybody's kitchen and you just pick any knife. My question when I ask my mom all the time when I go to her house is, hey, mom, where's your sharpest knife? She goes, oh, it's right here. And she always says this, no matter how old I am, be careful, it's really sharp. Because from experience, she knows how sharp her knives are. She knows that she's taking care of them. She knows that she's sharpening them on a regular basis because she's using them. But ask yourself that question is, do you know how effective you are in the kingdom? Are you asking yourself that question, have I sharpened my knife today? Have I sharpened my skills today? Have I spent time with the Lord today? Or are you still looking through the eyes or living off of the testimonies of somebody else? In that transition of Elijah and Elisha, you see something that that is so important right there is Elisha opens up his eyes and is able to see what happens to Elijah. He gets taken up, and it's a beautiful thing for him to see because he takes that same cloak and he does exactly, exactly what Elijah did to get them across the river, but he does the same thing to get himself back on the other side of the river. And the 50 people that, that were there, they all could testify. They all could see exactly what was happening in that transition because Elijah's gone, but Elisha's able to come back and does the same thing. He does the same thing with the cloak. He gets that portion, and you see the the life that he lives after that, and we've been learning about these things. But I'm asking you today is, are you ready for your double portion? See, I I, I have a title for today, and it's Spirit-Filled and Spirit-Led. Many of us may say that we are Spirit-Filled, but I would disagree when most of us could say that we're Spirit-Led. Is because a lot of us believe that we're filled with the Spirit, but I don't think we allow the Spirit to lead us at all times. When we look at Elisha's life, there's so many things that even as us in the simple church, we question. I said, man, that, I, 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 I got to tell you guys something. And I said this to the students. I said, I know the story of how that boy got healed. It was kind of weird, right? Eye to eye, cheek to cheek, body to body. How did that work? But Elisha didn't question anything that he probably heard from God. That's so weird. And I had to think to myself, well, when Jesus was here, he spit in some mud and rubbed it on somebody's eyes, and they were able to see. Spirit-filled, but are you spirit-led? Because if the Spirit asks you to do something, are you going to be like, no, that's weird, I'm not doing it? Or are you going to do it? I even thought to myself, like, Lord, if I want to be more like Elisha, what do I have to do? And I remember personally 
in my encounter, in my experiences, when the Lord was rampantly just doing things in my life that I was just so happy about, and I was just being used by him over and over, and, and it's just testimonies that I'll never forget. And personally, one of the things that I, I, I've learned is just we have something different right now. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have the advocate. We have someone who's here in our lives now today leading and guiding us. But are you using him? But is he a part of your life? What are things that we've learned? And for me personally, Elisha is a student of Elijah. And what I learned from there is he personally put himself in a position to see with his own eyes to witness himself the things of God because he put himself that close to Elijah. Now you ask me this, is going to church important? Ah, I can miss a Sunday. Ah, I can do church at home by myself. Ah, I can read the Bible at home. And I don't know why it's almost coming out like a mocking thing, but it sounds like that to a lot of people for me. Ah, I just do church at home. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be around people. Okay, well, here's the thing, though. Let me ask you a question. If you're at home... And let's say you're a person that doesn't believe in miracles. Maybe it's because you haven't seen with your own eyes somebody else being able to be used by God doing miracles. And when you go to church and you're able to witness things, I witnessed before my own eyes. I remember this story, and I'll never forget it. And, and it was a wild story, but there was a holiday that my brother and I were hanging out with my dad. We're, we're going uh, to the beach. We're at the beach, literally. We're, we're, like, having fun. We're digging, and I'm young at the time. I'm so young to the point where the other church was still, still there. My dad gets a phone call, and it's a holiday. My dad picks up the phone, and he's talking. He's like, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. Mike and I are just digging in the sand, and, and my dad looks down at us, and he goes, hey, somebody needs to get delivered, and they're bringing them to church, and dad's got to go. Mike and I were like, yeah, sure, let's go. No question about it. Before my own eyes, my dad didn't put us in another room. He's going to be like, oh, you're going to be scared. But before my own eyes, and Mike's eyes too, we watched this lady who literally was possessed and you're like, man, that's scary. No, because we actually got to see her come in in the beginning. And it was like one of the most different things I've ever seen in my life. That an old lady was able to like speak different languages in a sense, but in a different voice. It was, it was wild. But then she was delivered. And through the power of Jesus, she was transformed. And I saw that with my own eyes to the point where I could testify and that I was there. I was like the 50 men that were there when Elijah and Elisha had that, that transfer. I witnessed with my own eyes. What about whenever we see Pastor Khan he, praying for people and they receive healing? We witness it with our own eyes and we, don't, we can't deny it because people leave changed. I've witnessed with my own eyes people being healed right here in our very own church, right here at the altar. I've witnessed with my own eyes even the chairs that you're sitting in after a service. I remember at a revival conference we had, it was about signs and wonders. It was about fresh anointing. It was about having... a uh, new wine and, and fresh anointing. And, and I, I, I heard stories about gemstones from heaven. I said, nah, come on. No. No way. And it's crazy because I, I wasn't the only person that thought that. My mom thought that too. I think we're pretty much realists when it comes to those things that we need to see it before our own eyes. Some of the adults go and they travel to a church and in this church, they're known for the signs and wonders of God and things that happen. My mom says something that I would have said if I was there too. God, I want to believe that this is real. I truly want to believe that this is real. But if it's real, let it happen to me. My mom said that she was worshiping, closing her eyes, and she felt something like bump her shoe. Doop. She opened up her eyes. Gemstone. Nah, not true. No way. Well, I thought the same thing too until she brought it home and showed me. And then she said she even took it to a jeweler, and the jeweler said the cuts were perfect. You think somebody was, like, waiting for you to close your eyes and be like, gemstone. But how would they know that she was the one that prayed that prayer out of the whole group? See, the thing is, many of us want to question all these things, and I even questioned these things with Elisha when I was reading the Bible. Like, how did he know? Come on, like, be real. Like, how did he know to, like, eye to eye, cheek to cheek? Like, you know, sometimes when I lay hands, I just lay hands, you know, where the body part, they say it, that's hurting, right? But, like, I even tried to, like, justify it when I was reading the Bible. I was like, maybe he, like, held the baby, embraced the baby, and it was like, nah, he, like, full-on, like, eye-to-eye, cheek-to-cheek. 
Even if God was to tell me through the Holy Spirit, like, Sam, this man needs healing, he's blind. And what if, what if God said, spit in your hands and put it on his eyes? Are you like that in tune with the Spirit that you would know without a doubt that's him and he said that to you? Or would you be like, no, that's weird. That's really strange. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. See, like, how in tune are you with, with God? Because here's the thing. Where Elisha was back then, he was able to hear from God. Where we are today, we have the Holy Spirit who's speaking to us on behalf of what's happening in heaven. He's an advocate. That's literally what the Bible says, is that he would be reminding us of the things from what Jesus has taught us and shown us. My first point that I, that I have for you guys today is this, is the Holy Spirit helps us hear clearly from God. And I, and I want to just read from you guys from Acts chapter 2. It says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty wind, windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames, flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, because of Jesus ascending into heaven and telling the disciples, like, hey, I know I died on the cross, I know I'm back, but just letting you know, I got to go. No, no, don't go, please, we just got you. No, I, you don't understand. It's better for me to leave. Because you're going to receive something that you can't receive if I'm here. It's better for you to leave. And it was a plan that, that God had all along to the point where he knew that, okay, I'm going to forgive them for their sins to the sacrifice of my one and only son. But they're still going to be living life, and life's going to be tough. How do I help them? How do I guide them? How do I lead them? And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in, and we see that in the book of Acts. From the book of Acts, right after they're filled with the Holy Spirit, you see the miracles that happen through the disciples' lives. You see the way that the Holy Spirit uses them. You see the way that the Holy Spirit guides and leads them. You see the boldness, and you see all these things that change in the lives of the disciples because they received their edge that day. Their edge was they received the Holy Spirit. They received the abilities and the giftings of the Holy Spirit on that day. We all have the same opportunity. We all have the same abilities to be able to go in and preach, teach, and heal people in the name of Jesus and all the spiritual gifts that follow. But my question to you today is this, is are you hearing from God? Many people have asked me, well, Pastor Sam, how do you hear from God? Do you hear his voice? Do you hear this? Do you hear that? And truthfully, how I hear from God is through the Holy Spirit. I don't have any other way to tell you that but besides the Holy Spirit. That's literally from my perspective of me telling you that. And the only way that you can experience that too is through the Holy Spirit. Through allowing him to be a part of your life. Through allowing him to be a part of your life to the point where you get the download from the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. That's the only way. You know, in, in John uh, 14, 26, it says, But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Another scripture is Romans 8, 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with the groanings, in, with the groanings too deep for words. The Holy Spirit is a part of our life, and the Holy Spirit helps us to have that connection with our Heavenly Father, to be able to speak to Him almost with a clear landline, with a clear signal, to be able to speak to Him wherever we go. No, there's no longer any sacrifices that have to be made, and no, we don't have to do all A, B, C, D, E, F, G in order to talk to God. No, we get to just have a clear line of communication with Him. And, and whenever I understood that, that's when my life started to change. So I asked myself recently, and I was honest with you guys, and I shared it from the pulpit, and I said, I wonder why I haven't been able to receive almost promptings from the Holy Spirit to be able to do the things that was happening in my life from like August to like February. Like, why have I gone through a period of like disconnect? It's not that I don't love the Lord. It's not that I don't pray. It's not that I don't read my Bible. It's not that I don't worship. It's not that I haven't used my giftings for the Lord. But why? Why have I not been able to do the things or have these stories? And I asked God that day, and I, and I was there. Y'all were praying at the altar with me. I remember praying for those of y'all at the altar, and I was at the altar praying for myself. And the thing that I said is, Holy Spirit, why? Why have I not heard from you to do these things? And you know what the response from the Holy Spirit is? On that day for me that wrecked my life is, I've been speaking to you. You haven't been listening. 
I haven't changed. But you were just in a season of saying yes, but recently you've been in a season of saying no. Oh, man, that hurt so bad. That hurt me so bad. I preached the message about, have you lost your edge? That message maybe wasn't for you guys. That message was for me, and I needed it. And it hit me. It slapped me so hard in the face that it made me just realize, Sam, you keep saying you want to be like Elisha. You have everything within yourself to be even better because you have the Holy Spirit. See, he asked for double portions of Elijah, and the miracle was multiplied, double. But we live a life now where we have the Holy Spirit. I think we're like times 10 now of portions that we're able to receive from God because of the Holy Spirit. And a testimony for me to share with you guys about the Holy Spirit helps us hear clearly from God. On that day that I was sharing about Simple Church, we were, myself, Dylan, and Tim, we were in Easton's nursery. And we were sitting in there, and, and the message just hit us hard about the, the, the woman who was, uh, it, it was when she lost her son. And I told myself, Lord, I want to be like Elijah, and I don't want to leave until I get clear direction from you, because I don't want to stop at the first sign of just being like, ah, oh, that didn't work. Because don't y'all, you don't think that after that Sunday I asked the Holy Spirit to like speak, lead, and guide like he used to, right? I did. I did, but I stopped at the first point of me trying to hear the Holy Spirit and nothing happened. I sat in, that, in the nursery, my son's nursery, and we're sitting in the room. I'm sitting here, Dylan's here, Tim's here, and we, give, we begin to pray. And I just said, Holy Spirit, you're welcomed in this place. And I kid you not, Dylan, myself, and Tim, we encountered God in that room like never before. We just started opening up our hearts and pouring out to each other, and then all of a sudden I said, guys, hold on, I feel the Holy Spirit speaking. And then it was about stuff about their life and, and everything, and, and, and I'll vaguely share things. Uh, Dylan was sharing some things, and then all of a sudden I said to him, oh man, Dylan, I, I got to... Stop you really quick, because the Holy Spirit's speaking. And this is where I'm going to be honest with you guys and share my portion of it, because this is the reflection that I had and the conversation I had with the Holy Spirit that really hurt me, and it really changed my life recently, is I looked before them, and I, I looked at both of them, and I felt the Holy Spirit speaking and says, do you not see that these are the Elishas in front of you? I said, yeah, I see it, Holy Spirit. And he says, do you understand that you are the Elijah to them because they're the Elisha? And I said, yeah, I see it. And and the Holy Spirit goes, would they want double portions of what you have right now? And I said, I wouldn't even want them to ask for double portions of what I have right now because I don't think I have enough for them to even ask for double portions. It's not worth it. And the Holy Spirit said, Exactly. You, as a leader, need to get yourself in position so that others can see what you're doing and want double portions. And I said, yeah, I understand. And he said, okay, you get it? And I said, I got it. And he goes, so let's see things change. I said, okay. And I said, Holy Spirit, speak. And then I started to speak. And I, I started to say whatever I felt the Holy Spirit was saying. And that moment, it just flowed like it's, like I never, it was like riding a bike again. And I never skipped a beat. And I was able to speak the things from the Holy Spirit. And it was spot on for Dylan. It was spot on for Tim. And I started saying things into Dylan's life. And one of the things I said was, Dylan, I feel this, that as a leader now, I can say this, as I apologize. And that you want to receive double portions. But I personally, as a leader, I've been trying my best, but I need to get my edge back. And now that I feel like I'm getting my edge back, you can receive the double portions that God wants you to receive. So I want to pray over you to release it. And I prayed over him. And Everybody was bawling in the room, and all of a sudden, things started happening in Dylan's life. And it was like double portions. Like, it was incredible. Like, one of the things that Dylan's been praying about, because 
uh, uh, Dylan's starting to work for me for my company, and, 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 and it's about, all about camera stuff. So I said, hey, Dylan, I have, an old set, I have an old camera set up. It's still worth a lot of money. I want you to use it if you're able to. And Dylan was like, oh, I'll pay you for it. And I was like, man, how am I going to charge Dylan? Like, he doesn't have that much money. So I said, I'll put you on a payment plan. Pay me whatever you can pay me throughout the week, and that's fine. You know, however long it takes, whatever. Just pay me. He goes, yeah, that's fine. He starts learning camera work and all this kind of stuff, and he's getting used to it. And I see him, and I feel the Holy Spirit just speaking in my heart over and over and over. And, and, and I know, I, and I'm like, I know, Holy Spirit, I know, I know. And the Holy Spirit says, do you hear me? I said, I know, I hear you, I hear you. And Dylan pays me the first payment, right? And, and, and now I'm at the part where Dylan has paid me just a little bit. And then I feel the Holy Spirit just speaking after that day we sat in that room. Literally right after that day, Dylan comes to work with me to shadow me for the first time. The Holy Spirit speaking to me all day long, like, Sam, do you hear me? You asked to hear me clearly. Do you hear me? I'm like, I hear you. I hear you, Holy Spirit. He goes, you know what to do. I said, I know what to do. I said, Holy Spirit, I miss you. And thank you. Dylan works with me all day long. He crashes on the couch straight up four hours after work, and I'm sitting there in the room. I'm, I lay back in Easton's nursery. And I said, Lord, everything you spoke, I hear you. I lay in Easton's, like, day bed that we have, and the Holy Spirit says, you're not going to sleep yet, because remember, if you want to be able to receive double portions yourself, you also have to be willing and ready to hear me when I tell you to do things, right? And I said, yeah. In that moment of me laying in bed, I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. I learned this software that I've been trying to learn, like, just like, boom, just like that. To the point where I learned that software, it's changed the way that I've been doing my business to the point where the next day I submitted just some products or I submitted some photos of some products, and they're like, Sam, we're blown away. And they just sent me, hey, we just want to send you a little bit of money just to thank you because this is amazing. It's blown us out of the water. I'm like, what? And I felt the Holy Spirit say, I told you. So Jeannie comes home, and we're sitting in, and I'm sitting in Easton's nursery, and Dylan just finally wakes up, and we all go into Easton's nursery, and I tell Jeannie, man, it's so amazing what God was doing in the room and all these kind of things. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, Sam, you know what to do. I said, I know, Holy Spirit, I know. And I told Jeannie, I said, Jeannie, ask Dylan. Ask Dylan what, what the Lord's doing in his life and stuff. And Dylan starts to share to Jeannie, and, and I stopped Dylan. I said, Dylan, yesterday I felt the Holy Spirit tell me exactly what I needed to hear that in order for you to receive double portions, I need to get myself as a leader back in the place where you can receive the double portions. And I said, right after that prayer, I said, and the Lord wants you to receive your double portions. And I prayed that prayer for him. The very next day, I looked at Dylan when we're sitting back in the nursery. Jeannie was sitting in there. I said, Dylan, it's time for you to receive your double portions. God's wiped away my debt, and your debt is wiped away too. Don't pay me anything back for the camera. It's yours. And Dylan was like, what? He's like, no, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can, because this is your double portions. Walk in it. Live in it. I said, take this camera. Don't even use it anymore. Go sell it. Make some money and buy a better camera. You don't, have to, you don't owe me anything anymore. Go buy a better camera. And he's just been believing about double portions, double portions, double portions. And all of a sudden, I got reconnected with, with one of my good friends, and it was Dr. Tubio. And I said, hey, Dr. Tubio, just randomly asking, do you happen to have any cameras that you're willing to sell? He said, I do, but why? What's up? He knows I have good camera gear because he heard my testimony about Michelle. He heard that I upgraded right after Michelle. And he knows. He's a man of God. He knows these things. And I say to him, I said, look, man, the Lord's using me again another camera. And he goes, really? I said, yeah, I know. And he goes, what do you need? And I said, I need a new camera body for a student, and I'm going to pay for it up front for him, and I'm, I'm just, he's going to pay me back later in the future. He's going to. Somehow, some way, he'll pay me back. And I said, just let me be able to get this deal. Dylan actually had the courage to ask his dad and say, hey, dad, I want to use the camera for church. I want to be able to take photos and videos, and I do want to work with Pastor Sam. And he asked his dad, will you loan me some money? And his dad said, without hesitation, sure, I don't mind. If you're going to use it for the church, I don't mind. Conversations had, I talked to Dr. Tubio, the camera body that I'm supposed to get, to, the camera body that I want Dylan to get is $2,200, brand new. Dr. Tubio hardly ever used this camera body. And he said, I'll give it to him, $1,500, meet me up. I said, really? He said, yeah, meet me at my clinic. 
I go to Dr. Tubio's clinic, I look down at the floor, and I've seen this in all his videos, and the floor says aligned. And I just get smacked by the Holy Spirit and says, see what happens when you're aligned with me? Are you hearing from God? We have the Holy Spirit. We want, we want what Elisha has, but what we don't understand is we even have better now. We have better now. The multiplications of miracles from Elijah to Elisha is one thing, but guess what we have now? We get miracles every day. We can hear from the Holy Spirit every day. But are you willing and ready to hear him? The second, the second point that I had is the Holy Spirit activates the supernatural in your life. See, we, want to, we, we read what Elijah's doing, and we want all those things. We're like, oh, I want to see miracles. I want to be able to prophesy over somebody's life, and the oil gets multiplied. Oh, I want to be able to do the miracle to where a, a metal head floats when I throw wood into the water. Like, things that don't make sense, I want that. Because sometimes God just doesn't make sense because our, humans mind, our human minds can't comprehend the things that our spiritual father can do. He created this world. He can change how our, whatever he wants. He can snap his fingers and things, things can manifest. He can, speak his, he can speak words and the earth is created. Light comes about. Why do you not think that he could speak life into you and your life will change? We have the Holy Spirit. He's trying to speak life into you on a daily basis. Woo! The Holy Spirit activates the supernatural in your life. That's my second point. And, and here's the thing. If you're looking at Elijah's life, and maybe you're looking at Elijah's life, and you want to do those miracles, and you want to perform those things, and you want to be able to, to see the things that they saw, and you want to even see greater, well, you can't see with your natural eyes. You need spiritual eyes in order to have that. You need to have the Holy Spirit in your life. My third point is this, and I'm just going to go through it because I want time to pray for you guys. The third point is this, is we are the temple for the Holy Spirit. We host, we, we, we house the Holy Spirit. Maybe the fact that you haven't had your edge is because your house has been dirty and the Holy Spirit couldn't live in it, couldn't move in it. Maybe today you just need some spiritual house cleaning. Maybe you need some life cleaning. It's Pentecost Sunday. The Holy, the Holy Spirit came upon the, the, the disciples in the upper room and their life was never the same. Never the same. People thought they were wild. People thought they were drinking early in the morning. Nope, they were just filled by the Holy Spirit. Their lives were changed, never the same. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, it says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price so you must honor God with your body. We want what Elisha had, but are you willing to make the sacrifice like he did in the beginning of his journey to leave his life behind and follow the leading of God? You want what they had, but are you willing to give up what you currently have to follow what God wants you to do? And that's where I'm at today. See, it, I'm glad that the testimony has just lived out itself because you've watched before your own eyes today, Dylan run back and forth just taking photos out of his own heart of just wanting to take photos. I, I challenged him. I almost, I made a, a, a bet with him. I said, Dylan, you're working too hard on Saturday. No way you'll be at church on time on Sunday. You'll probably come after the first song. He goes, no, I won't. I said, yes, you will. He was here way before me. I pulled up to the church. I saw his red car. I said, Jeannie, she goes, yep, you owe him $20. He beat you. He got you. He got here before you. I was like, yeah, I know. And he was up here already taking photos. Look, when you're filled by the Holy Spirit, you're gonna to wanna to do things that the Holy Spirit wants you to do. And you're gonna live out the double portions. You're gonna live out the things that God wants you to do. And you're gonna do it even greater because we have the Holy Spirit in our life. We're prompted and led by the Holy Spirit. I just feel like the Holy Spirit's speaking right now. So if you can, just rise to your feet. I feel the Holy Spirit saying that there's so many of you guys in this room who want to be led by me. But the thing that you don't understand is in order to be led by me, you have to hear from me. And I think that many of you have allowed the world or have allowed other people to speak into your life, to say things to stop you from hearing the things that I want to say to you. I, and I personally feel like, and this is me speaking now, is that we've allowed our doubts, we have allowed our fears to be able to stop us from understanding that the Holy Spirit wants to use us. I was in a place of fear for a while, and that fear was, Holy Spirit, if I keep doing these things, and this is my fear, Holy Spirit, if I keep giving away things, are you going to provide for me? And the Holy Spirit has shown me time and time again that if you allow me to use your life, I'll take care of you for the rest of your life. And it just 
took me to be able to understand that. And here's my miracle was God revealed to me before my own eyes and have revealed to you guys that I prayed for a miracle for three years and the boy is here and my son is here and my son is here worshiping. And I, and I was driving up to church today and I, and I bawled my eyes out. I was driving because we, we, had, a, a, we had worship music going on. I said, honey, I, I pray one day that Easton is a great worship leader. I just started bawling my eyes out. Because I wouldn't, I, I, before I wasn't in a place to even say, I, I hope to see Easton be a worship leader one day. I, I was praying back then, Lord, I hope to just have a miracle of a baby. And God has shown me and provided for me. So this is what I ask. I'm gonna close out service just like this. For those that wanna be filled by the Holy Spirit, for those who want to receive your double portions, come to the altar. Pastor Khan and I will pray for you. And this is the own response, this is the own question, this is the own answering that you have to do, is do you want your double portions and you'll receive it from the Holy Spirit. And we'll pray out and for those that, that need to head out and, and for those that are saying, it's not my timing right now, it's okay, don't worry about it. In your own timing, when you can see the ascension of Elijah yourself, you'll understand, you'll get it, right? That's what Elijah said to Elisha. So I wanna pray. And, I, and for those of you who your hearts are, you're feeling that, you're feeling whatever it is that, that the Holy Spirit's prompting on your heart right now, keep that as we pray and close out. Holy Spirit, we thank you so much for service today and we are expecting and we know that you're gonna do something great. Lord, we ask that you be with all of us as we leave service today. Be with us as we enjoy this time of fellowship out there, Lord. But Lord, we ask that don't let anybody leave this place without their double portions if they want it, Lord. We thank you so much for service today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I cannot wait to see you guys next week. It's going to be a great time next week. Thank you for coming out to service today, and um, I hope that you were blessed. Amen.